Hi everybody, um, welcome to the online open day for MA Design for Social Innovation and Sustainable Futures. Quite a, quite a mouthful. <laughs> um, I am Emily Brisbane Waters. I'm currently the acting course leader for the course um, and we're also joined by Anna Schlimm. Um, so we're two of the lecturers on the course and we're here to kind of guide you through today and to answer any questions you might have. Um, so let's get started. So as I mentioned briefly, um, I'm the acting course leader. We currently have, um, our current course leader is currently on maternity leave, um, but they will be returning in September 2023, which is this year. So if you were to kind of apply for the course and go ahead and get a place, then um, Ella would be your course leader, who's fantastic as well. So who we are. So MA, Design for Social Innovation, Sustainable Futures, uh, is a course that questions and hopes to expand what design can be. We're a generative studio for creators interested in working towards eco-social sustainability. As a community, we strive to challenge norms and imagine alternatives by centering care, plurality and justice in our work. So that's kind of our, you might have seen that kind of bio on our, our, our website or you might kind of heard about us. But I think kind of breaking that down a little bit is our students are really interested in kind of asking questions and questioning uh, the kind of structures in the world and questioning the systems that we might have kind of been working with. Um, something that I always kind of talk about is at our final degree show, um, you know, all of our students' work was very much about these proposals for these new futures and these new ideas. Um, it's not necessarily fixed to one um, type of practice, it's very interdisciplinary. We have students join us from all different backgrounds, um, all different design practices. Some students aren't, aren't designers, some students are scientists, some students come from, from all over and all different practices. So I think that's what make us, makes us quite unique is the fact that um, it's about all of these different expertise coming together and I think we learn a lot from each other on the course as well as obviously from the lecturers so it's about kind of how we can kind of work together in a caring way as well as kind of doing your degree. So the core team um, as I mentioned, I'm Emily, and you can kind of see the pictures of us all here. <laughs> um, and then we've got uh, Anna, who's here. Do you want to say hi, Anna? Um, yep. Hi. I'm I'm a lecturer on, on the team. Um, it's nice to be here with you. Um, and then we have Gab, who is also a course lecturer. Um, oh, my presentation's just gone back one. Sorry about that. Um, and we have Zhao, who's a course lecturer as well, and then obviously Ella, who is the course leader, but is currently on maternity leave. So um, these are the core members of staff. Um, and then we have kind of associate lecturers and visiting practitioners and kind of guest lecturers that come into the course as well. So that's kind of people who are working in industry um, and have lots of experience and will come in and they may, might come in and do a lecture. They might come and teach for a couple of weeks on the course. Um, or they might come and hold a workshop or something like that so um, even though there's kind of five of us as the core staff we really try to bring in lots of people with different expertise different lived experience um, to make sure you get a really rounded um, experience on the course this is the way that the course is structured and i'll talk you a little bit through each of the units um, and Anna was going to kind of help me with some of the units that she's running. So we all kind of take charge of different units throughout the course that kind of sit with our own practice. Um, so there are five units on the course um, and your final major project is the last unit. So that's like the big core unit of, of your degree. But everything leading up to that is kind of learning and understanding, um, using kind of gaining tools and gaining insights that you can use for that final major project. Um, so unit one is research and framing, um, unit two eco-social impact and innovation and then you've got unit three is your collaborative unit, unit four is your co-design and sustainable futures unit and then unit five is this design in action final project which will kind of take up a, a big chunk of your time on the course. So the way that it works currently is we have a mix of on-campus um, and on 
off campus working and also we have some some online sessions so it's kind of about we have about two hours online per week um, and then everything else is either in the classroom um, but we really like to get out and explore um, especially as you know we're in one of the most vibrant cities in the world so there's so much to see we will regularly be going on um, exhibition trips or to galleries or to kind of maybe run workshops in different areas um, and so we really really um, like to get out of the classroom and make sure you are getting a really good experience of being in London. Uh, we also collaborate a lot with kind of stakeholders and people outside of the classroom. So it's not about the work that you make at LCC kind of living inside that space. It's about how it connects with people outside. So getting outside as much as possible is really, really important for us. Um, as I mentioned before in the introduction, is that we work a lot, we work together, it's very collaborative. Uh, yeah, you'll learn a lot from the lecturers and the associate lecturers and the kind of visiting practitioners, but you'll also learn a lot from your peers. So um, we ask students to kind of run workshops, we ask students to give have an input in the course. I think it's really important, like the amount of work that you put in and the amount of engaging engagement you have with the course, you'll definitely get lots and lots out of it. So, you know, and you come and you're part of this course, you're a valued member of that of that team. And we kind of expect you to kind of step up and um, be part of that um, and kind of take charge of your own experience as well. Um, and these are just kind of specifics for different units, but we'll kind of run you through the units in, in a little bit more detail. Um, but yeah, so um, we have a kind of exhibition as well. We like to kind of show our work to people at different times. There's also the kind of final show, but then this is our kind of work in progress show. And again, focusing on that idea of kind of being outside the classroom and with the public. Um, Anna can talk about this a little bit more in detail, but this is kind of um, one of the units where we decided to do this exhibition in a park during COVID just due to kind of um, certain restrictions, but actually it worked really well and it's a really great place to kind of engage people. So this is one of the parts of um, the unit that um, students get to kind of show their own work and um, engage with the public. Um, okay, so yeah, that's some of the kind of ways of working. So this is the first unit. So unit one is research and framing for innovation. Um, and Anna, maybe do you want to talk a little bit more about this? this you know, while you're yeah, sure. Here. Yeah. Hey, um, so yeah, uh, unit one is like I'm said, research and framing for innovation. So it's really kind of a foundational unit on the course where you get introduced um, and get to practice on kind of a, a project of your choice. Um, the foundational research methods that we use for um, eco-social design, um, looking particularly at things um, like ethics, looking at how you can embed kind of a just um, approach to your design research, um, but also thinking about creative ways to um, to do research. And I think I um, said earlier, um, it's not necessarily about creating kind of final objects or products on this course so quite often the um, research you do on the on a, a given project is also part of the outcome so a lot of your work is very process driven so that's why we put a lot of emphasis on kind of um yeah getting hands-on experience with uh, a really wide range of, of research methods and approaches um so yeah that is uh, the first unit where we also really encourage students to be quite uh, experimental um, and it's it's usually quite fun because it's the first time you get to choose something um, that's within your uh, your area of interest or yeah I guess yeah whatever you you're interested in working on and and we kind of help you shape that through tutorials and things like that on the unit. Um, unit two is called eco-social innovation and, and impact so it's it kind of runs alongside um, unit one and it, it actually those two units are very interlinked um, and you look at the same subject matter in both of those units. Um, so we think of, of unit one, the research unit, as kind of an opportunity for you to do research and unit two is, is more about then taking that research, looking at it in a more kind of complex um, way um, and and 
kind of situating it within wider discourses of design, of sustainability, um, and um, then actually developing a more practical re uh, outcome from the research you did in unit one. So it's kind of a chance to put uh, your research into a more kind of um, refined design proposal, make use of some of the workshops and spaces at LCC and actually get your hands dirty um, in making, yeah. Just to say also there's, for example, there's a reading group that is part of uh, unit two. So it's also a place where we have a lot of discussions where you get into the subject matter a lot deeper and um, have time for reflection. And it's also longer than unit one. So it kind of extends over the winter break and you come back from uh, the break and kind of then um, use the, the research you've done in unit one and the concepts and theory that we've explored in unit two to inform your, your design outcome. These are just some images from uh, kind of hands-on workshops we were doing with students. <coughs> so that the one with the plants that has the little map around it, um, that was a, a workshop on biophilia. Um, so looking at kind of designing with and for and inspired by plants. Um, then the the one where you can see the kind of poster making i think was um students making a podcast uh, about um <coughs> objects and um we have a, a lecturer who who focuses on kind of cursed the concept of cursed and blessed objects and looking at that through kind of a a, a cultural lens and seeing um how we interact with the things around us um, and then the other image is from a mending workshop. So we, we do a series of talks around the politics of making, different approaches uh, to making, and then also um, experimenting with those in practice. And then uh, unit three is the collaborative unit. Um, so this is a really important unit for students. It's kind of taking everything you've kind of learned in the first two units and also kind of putting it into practice. It's about learning how to work with your peers. So you'll be working in groups of kind of five. And it, I guess it's kind of thinking if you were kind of in a studio setting or you're working as a kind of uh, working group, who, what are the roles that you take on take on in that role, in that, sorry, in that group, in that project? Um, it's a really exciting project because we get to work with kind of external stakeholders and industry. Um, so the students have just finished or are handing their projects in for tomorrow um, and they've been working with look this is actually from last year but this is working with the newham council but we we try to kind of mix up the briefs every year so that you get a, di a different experience and also that the course kind of works with different um stakeholders and um kind of grows in our reputation in that way um so this is the unit this year this is the way that way that it looks so we decided to do four briefs this year so um the students kind of had a choice of which projects to work on um, and this is a 10 week project um, and it's mainly self-directed by the students. So you kind of work in groups with your industry partner um, and answer a brief that's kind of been written with us and them. So the people that we're working with this year are the Forest Land Trust and UCL, um, the Migration Museum, um, which is a museum in, um, it's based in Lewisham at the moment, they've just got funding for a, a much bigger site that's going to be next to Tower Bridge. Um, it's the first kind of museum that kind of celebrates kind of migration in the UK. Um, and then the line is a kind of mental health and uh, public art walking um, external outside gallery, I guess, if that, if that makes sense. Um, and so that's also about kind of like that the students are specifically working on um, the idea of well-being and how that can impact um, people's mental health, how that how nature and walking and being outside in London, in the city can can, you know, be beneficial for people. Um, so that's really interesting. And one of the students who graduated from the course two years ago is actually working at that organisation. So it's really nice. They've been able to kind of come back and work with the students in a very hands on way and kind of give their input of obviously how the organisation runs, but also their experience of being on the course and how they were working when they were studying as well. So we really try to kind of keep that um, connection with our alumni. We're a relatively young course, so we don't have huge amounts of alumni, but it is growing and growing. And all of our students, we kind of invite back to come and kind of share their journey, which I think is really, really great. Um, and talking of that, Rene Materials are uh, very recent graduates. They graduated, they're graduating this year, but they finished um, in December. 
Um, and they are two students that for their final major project set up um, Rene Materials, which is a kind of circular material um, system that works at Central St. Martins. Um, and it's about kind of materials. So people, any unwanted materials, people will drop off. And also it's open to students to pick up materials and it's free. So it's kind of trying to get rid of like some of the waste that's actually made within these um, within these schools. And at the moment they have kind of, they've just won, I think, um, some funding. Um, um, at, at to be kind of uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in an incubator, I think, for that project. So there's lots of opportunity as well when you kind of take your final major project. Like I said previously, like, you know, it's about lots of students kind of come to a point at the end of their project where they're still asking questions and they're kind of proposing next steps. Um, and then there's lots of support within the university to help you get funding for that or to give you mentorship or to, you know, help you push those things forward. Um, so we're really supportive of, of your projects and your ideas. But yeah, so um, then we have after your collaborative unit, which is 10 weeks, at the same time you start your unit four. So that's also something to mention that um, the units, the way that they run, they overlap. So you're not only working on one project at a time. So it's very much about kind of managing both those projects, knowing where to put your resources, knowing where to put your time and kind of getting used to working in that very kind of professional way. Um, so Anna is the uh, unit leader for uh, Co-Design for Sustainable Futures. So I'll hand over to you to talk about some of these um, examples. Um, the title kind of says what it is. It's about looking at um, kind of moving away from uh, individualist visions for a future, um, starting to think about visions for plural futures meaning um, that you get the people who are implicated in the kind of future you're thinking about involved in the process. So the, the image here where you can see um, students kind of collaging uh, is a big, we, we run kind of a world building workshop um, where you start with kind of a signal in the present that you're interested in and extrapolate into a future scenario and then co-create that, that world together. Um, and throughout the unit, you use this world and expand on it through your research and then uh, kind of co-design an object from that future that you want to bring bring back into the present to kind of have a conversation about or kind of generate a community around um, uh, in the here and now so that it helps people to kind of open up possibilities and open up imaginations about uh, different kinds of futures and what might be possible. Um, so it's quite a fun unit. Uh, we do a lot of kind of experimentation. Uh, the, the screenshot here uh, was actually during during COVID. We did a whole workshop and we were kind of stepping through digital portals into different kinds of futures, collecting clues, bringing them back. And um, it was involving also a lot of role playing. And yeah, we just tried to have a really kind of varied and, and fun time. And then, as I mentioned, kind of in the introduction, you know, the idea that we're kind of a collective as a course, uh, you know, we like to get out of the classroom, we like to do things together. Here we are at the, at the um, Greenwich Observatory. Um, we eat a lot of pizza. <laughs> I think we seem to kind of, um, we come together a lot of, as a course and we want to kind of share ideas and we want to make it a very kind of social experience as well. Um, and so there's a lot of kind of collective action and, co and kind of collaborating throughout the course. Um, so this is the uh, degree show from um, last year um, and it was a really interesting um, opportunity for us because uh, the two previous years it was um, COVID, they were online and then the year, the one year that it wasn't online it was off-site. Um, so this was the first time we've actually done a kind of physical showcase in LCC alongside the other uh, programmes. So it was really interesting to see how our work or the students work fitted in within the rest of the kind of um, courses at LCC. And as I kind of touched on in the introduction, a lot of our students were thinking about possible futures, they're thinking about proposals, they're thinking about ideas, they're thinking about asking questions. Um, it's quite interesting to see when you kind of walk through all of the shows where you'll have kind of maybe um, a specific kind of graphics course and people have made specific products or designed specific books or something like that. So there is a kind of end point 
whereas our students is much more a display and, and a, an invitation to kind of have a discussion with them, to get involved, to kind of imagine a different future. So these are some of the images from that show. And I think we got some really good feedback from that. Some of you might have been there. Some of you, you know, might have seen some of these images online, but definitely very ha happy to answer kind of questions about this. Um, yes, and also just to touch on this, so Unit 5 is called Design in Action, and as I mentioned in the introduction, that's something that you work on um, from kind of May time until December, so you kind of get um, a good um, few months to work on that, and that can be anything that you want to kind of explore. Um, most of the projects within the course, you get to choose the subject area that you want to work with. It's only, I think, unit three where you get to kind of, where you have a bit more of a directed brief because you're working with an industry partner, but everything else you can kind of decide on the area that you'd like to explore. And it's really helpful to kind of maybe explore different ideas along the way. Um, and then um, by the time you get to your final major project, you've kind of decided where, where you might want to be. You don't have to know what that is before you join the course. You, some people come to the course with a really clear vision of what they want to do. Some people have no idea and work it out along the way. So we're open to both ways of working. Um, and then what happens is your uh, final major project will be displayed in the show. So these are all images of students' final major projects. Um, you can also collaborate uh, for your final project. So Rene Materials, as I touched on earlier, are kind of two students that have been working together and have kind of set up this enterprise. Um, and the title of this unit is Design in Action. Um, and the idea is that you kind of create something, you create a something to test. So it doesn't have to be a final design, but it has to be kind of something that's kind of intercepting the world, something that um, you go out, you put into a space, you, you'd connect with people, you connect with the community and you get feedback on and you can measure the impact of it. So I think that's what's really, really key to this project is kind of connecting with people outside of LCC, getting feedback on your ideas, getting opinions on your ideas and then kind of reviewing and being reflective on that in a report that you have to write. Um, so that's the kind of um, unit five. Yeah, so that's the end of the presentation. Um, I'd like to open it up for some questions. Did you want to add anything, Anna, or should we go to some questions? Yeah, I think let's let's take questions. Cool, great. So is there any questions from um, any of the participants, attendees? Hi, um, I'm here to ask you guys some questions. Uh, we've got a few coming in. Um, would you mind um, letting us know how many students there are um, on the course per year? Uh, at the moment, they, we have 40 students um, in our cohort. Um, and there is at one point in the year, the, the cohorts overlap where you'll have, we'll have our new students and our, and our graduating students working. Um, there's a kind of overlap, I guess, in kind of October before our students graduate. So sometimes there'll be uh, kind of two cohorts working together, which is about 80, but then at the moment we have, yeah, about 40 in the cohort. I mean, and it fluctuates every year, so I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly, but that's kind of the, the average at the moment. Yeah, we've had between 33 and 40 for the last three years. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, and someone would like to know a little bit more about how um, kind of mentorship in the programme runs. Are you assigned a mentor or advisor to work with throughout the course? Um, you aren't throughout the whole course. You have your you have your kind of key lecturers, as we mentioned before, the kind of um, the core kind of team of five, and then you'll have the visiting practitioners and the associate lecturers, and you can kind of you you'll have tutorials and you'll kind of mix them up, so you'll kind of get to talk to lots of different members of staff about your projects. When you get to um, unit five, you you get a supervisor. So um, at the moment we work with a kind of one supervisor to about four or five students. Um, so then that'll be someone who kind of uh, works in industry or works within the design space within your interested kind of um, project area. So we kind of make sure we try and pair you up to someone who's kind of um, working in a similar kind of subject area. Um, and that that support is given alongside your taught sessions. So you still carry on being given kind of lectures and seminars by uh, the core team. Um, obviously, the core team also becomes supervisors. So you might have uh, a supervisor who's on the course or it might be someone external that comes in specifically for that unit. 
Perfect, thank you. Um, and we have someone in attendance who is from a communication design background. Um, mm -hmm. Would like to know how you think communication design projects slash expertise can fit within the course. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think, as I mentioned earlier, like we're, it's a very interdisciplinary course. There's no kind of specific um, practice that you have to have to be on the course. Um, it's very much about questioning the way of doing things and questioning the kind of materiality of things. Um, we have students that come from all sorts of backgrounds. So we have um, graphic design students, communication design students, uh, students who, like I said, the science background, um, product design students, kind of industrial design students, all different kind of areas. Um, I think it's really helpful to have kind of communication design skills when you come to the to the course, um, because obviously your projects are about how you communicate with external people or with communities or with other kind of species. So having those skills is really helpful to kind of um, give you some grounding or some some tools, I guess, to use um, as you kind of move through the course. But it's, some, it's something that's also really nice about the course is that people come from different spaces and they also kind of share their skills as well. So some people are really good at product design and building and some people are really good at graphic design. So it's it's not one kind of key criteria, but yeah, it's, it's kind of definitely a helpful skill to have. Yeah, I think maybe it's it's helpful to think about it in a way where, where you're taking your existing practice and bringing it into a space where you apply kind of an eco-social sustainability lens to your work. And like Em was talking about as well, you also have group projects um, where you will collaborate with people who have other skills. So, um, and it's an opportunity to, to question your, your existing practice and kind of develop it in a direction maybe that that feels interesting to you, that aligns with your values and your kind of hopes for where you want to go in the future. Um, yeah, I hope that made sense. <laughs> yeah, definitely. that's great. Yeah, thank you. Um, speaking a little bit about the future, um, someone would like to know if uh, you'd be able to talk a little bit more about how the skills and mindset obtained in the modules can translate into different fields and what kind of career paths graduates mm. have tended to go down? Yeah, definitely. I mean, again, it's something that doesn't have a kind of one answer, um, but we have a lot of students that kind of go into kind of policy. We have students that go into design studios. We have students that start their own studios. So a lot of these projects that you see at the degree show will be projects that students want to kind of carry forward and get their own funding for, from and kind of go in an independent way. We have people working for the NHS, we have, you know, it's kind of, it's very, very broad as well, the kind of scope that it can can take you down. We obviously have um, students also that work in education and alumni that are interested in, in kind of being educators themselves. Um, so it's, there's no kind of one answer to that but it is it's very I would say it's very um adaptable and very flexible as well I think some more feedback that we got from um from people visiting the show from all different industries were saying you know we need these ideas within our companies within our kind of setting so it's not that it's about where do um what jobs do our students get it's about which company needs a designer who has who thinks in this way and I think you know lots of people are starting to think in this kind of eco-social way and lots of people need to kind of rethink the systems that are built Look, some of our students go into kind of service design spaces and and kind of different places like that i mean anna do you have anything to add on that um i think you yeah i think you covered it um but yeah i, I think that there is just no straightforward answer to that question and i think it also depends on you know some people come into the course and know exactly where they want to go um some people experiment a lot and try different things out and might find something completely new that they're interested in so um yeah also one thing to mention is uh, quite a few students go on to do phds um about topics that they've kind of gotten interested in on the course um so yeah uh, I, I think we try to give you lots of examples of what people do in the field so bringing in kind of practitioners to give talks about um what they do and also how they got there um because it, it it tends to be quite non-linear i think and a lot of all of us on the team as well we we didn't just you know go straight into this we all have our own little kind of squiggly uh journey to to get <laughs> to the point where we are now. And um, we're also all very happy to talk about that. Um, 
so yeah hopefully it's it's something that becomes clearer and that we can also help you kind of define and prepare for it once you're on the course yeah definitely and i think each year as well like um students with different interests come through so we kind of do everything we can to kind of connect those with those networks and i think that's also what happens with the supervision so um i i originally when i started working on the course was a supervisor and um, I kind of connected my supervisees with industry in areas of people that I knew and areas that they were interested in. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of support within that space, but we can't give you a, a direct answer. This is where you will go because it's, you know, it's so broad and it's kind of up to you to decide what your area of expertise is. That's great. Thank you. Um, I guess on a slightly different vein, um, as a student at LCC, are you able to use other college um, kind of workspaces? Um, and if we're kind of talking about collaboration, do we collaborate with other courses as well? Uh, yes, you can. You have access to all of the campuses if you are a student at LCC. Um, as uh, Rene Materials, I've actually did, did quite a lot of their work at uh, Central St. Martins for the last bit of their um, degree. Uh, but you have access to all the libraries and I'm unsure about the workshops but I think you there's probably a way that you know if there's not something we have at LCC and you need to use it at a different campus we can kind of make that happen um so what's the second part of the question do um we collaborate with other courses at any point um there have been students that collaborate with other other courses so uh, again it's kind of um up to you to kind of start that collaboration uh, we have in the collaborative unit, we are collaborating with a course from UCL as well, about which is um, kind of more of an urban planning sustainability course. Um, but I think um, it's very kind of welcome for you to collaborate, but kind of going out and finding those collaborations for your projects um, is really beneficial. So yeah, we're open to it. But yeah. you need yeah. We have also in the past had collaborations with other courses. For example, we um, Last year, we we kind of did an exchange with uh, the Internet Equalities MA at the um, in Cre Creative Computing Institute at Camberwell. So some of our students attended a course that they were uh, a unit that they were running, and some of their students came to us. So I think that there's always opportunity, um, and we're all always really open to you kind of suggesting things. Um, also, I think a lot of students um, just collaborated with students on other courses for their final project. So I know that one of the people I was supervising was working with um, a data visualization student. Um, so yeah, like Em said, it's it's kind of also up to you to to kind of reach out to people um, and make suggestions to us because we are we're kind of always up for hearing from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. That's great. Thank you. Um, would you mind expanding a little bit on who the visiting practitioners may be? Um, for example, what fields of work have they come from? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, again, we try to get in a really diverse range of people. Um, we try to make sure, you know, you, you kind of, that all of the interests on the course are kind of catered to. Um, but kind of some key examples, for example, we'll have a lot of people that work in kind of planning or architecture or public um engagement people that do exhibition design people that are curators um i remember a really great talk that we had from someone who was coming in and talking about the experience of smell and how our, our how that impacts on our kind of overall experience of kind of paintings and visuals and spaces that we're in um we have a lot of alumni who come in and talk about their experiences um and people that come in and do workshops we'll have we have activists that come in and do workshops around kind of messaging and how how that works as well um anna maybe you could you're kind of organizing some visiting practitioners at the moment so maybe you could yeah um other people we've had we forget example we did a radical histories tour around elephant and castle with a, a historian um we have people coming in a lot of makers actually coming in so we have one of our kind of core uh, associate lecturers uh, runs the Black Girls Knit Club and is very involved in kind of looking at textiles and craft and um, social justice, uh, Simone. Um, we have coming up a bunch of uh, 
a bunch of practitioner talks uh, for unit four. So we've got people there from kind of a queer subculture hopefully coming in to give us archival, um, an archival session and tour. Uh, we have people who are more focused on um, growing, uh, fermentation we've had a fermentation expert and who actually graduated the course she was looking at kind of food racism and drawing on her um her personal heritage as as a um korean student and then um i'm trying to think now who else is coming in we have uh someone coming in who's more looking at physical computing so using things like arduino to uh, help you create uh, interactive um, pieces or installations. We have um, someone who's very focused on kind of the use of tools and the philosophy of of making um, and reuse. So I think yeah, there there's lots and lots of different um, people coming in with different backgrounds who all kind of add a different perspective to what design and sustainability and creative practice is and can be um and they're all they all tend to just be really open to kind of discussing their practice and discussing um how they got where they are which i i always find really useful because it's very hard to kind of see someone doing something really cool and being like but i could never get there um so i think it's really useful for people to kind of explain you know maybe they came from something completely different like one of our practitioners did a philosophy degree and then ended up becoming a maker but that completely informs like how how he makes and what he makes and um yeah i guess people come from very diverse and and interesting backgrounds in general um i hope that gives you kind of an idea it's not I mean, very I feel like everything we say is like there's no straightforward answer but there's a lot going on <laughs> also what we do what we try to do is um we kind of reflect on the course a lot and we also listen to the students a lot so we ask the students what kind of practitioners they would like to hear from so if there's once if there's someone specifically you'd really love to come and do a guest lecture we'll reach out to them. Um, so we kind of adapt and change the course to fit the, the cohort that we have as well, because we want to make sure it's rewarding for the students that are on the course. That's great. That sounds really interesting. Um, we have a question about technical skills. Um, do applicants have to know a lot of technical skills before they apply? And is there any support available when they do join? Um, no, we don't expect you to have uh, necessarily any technical skills. Um, I, obviously, um, some some form of design skills or some previous BA, but it also doesn't have to be specifically design. Um, there are lots of technical workshops within LCC. We have a creative um, creative tech lab where you can kind of literally go down with an idea and kind of go and say, I want to make this thing. So if it's if you're thinking around kind of technology side of things, there's lots of those things. Um, at LCC. Also, as Anna mentioned, the kind of creative computing at Camberwell. Um, what we won't say, what we won't teach you on the course is we will not be giving you, giving you like a step by step in kind of like graphic design or a step by step in certain things. You, those those opportunities are there for you to to find. There are um, we have a kind of digital suite where you can learn all the different Adobe softwares, and there are kind of um, program there are there are kind of sessions on kind of teaching that as you go through as well so we have the access to that you have um the physical workshops as well we have woodwork and metal and laser cutting and again you'll be introduced to all of those um and then it's kind of up to you to kind of go in and use them um i guess what we teach on the course is very much about kind of critical and theory and kind of conceptual design and then your and and kind of the politics of making but you're the ones that have to then go and kind of you know put that into practice um you also have access to kind of screen printing book binding uh risograph printing letterpress um i guess the lcc used to be the school of printing so there's these huge kind of print presses and things that you can kind of learn about those kind of technical things if you're interested in as well yeah and i think um because people come from so many different backgrounds it's not like you know we we all expect you to have a certain aesthetic or a certain kind of like style at all i think we we really celebrate the kind of diversity on the course and um if you don't have a kind of creative or a generic 
creative or design background. Um, we're also very interested in, you know, figuring out how you can make some sort of aesthetic or approach to um, visual um, and project communication work for you. Um, and again, I think working with other students is always an option. Um, exchanging skills is an option, whether that's within our course or on other courses. So yeah, I would, yeah, I think encourage anyone who, who is interested and feels creative in any way <laughs> to kind of um, go for it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, someone has asked if it's possible to do uh, two MA courses at the same time, or perhaps work alongside um, doing the MA course with yourselves. Um, I don't think it's possible to do two MA courses at the same time. <laughs> I mean, I might be wrong, um, but it's a lot. It's you know, we expect quite a lot of our students. Um, and you'll be in, you know, you have taught sessions three times a week, so I, I wouldn't know how you would kind of manage that. Uh, in the chart, it, it, you know, I'm sure there's maybe students who have done that, but I mean, I, they're not that we know of. I think we like our students to kind of be really engaged in the course, and we expect you to be doing work outside of those lectures and seminars. So it's kind of three days taught, but we're expecting you to be doing kind of coursework outside of the um, taught sessions and reading and researching. Um, so, you know, it's more of a kind of time scale thing, if anything. Um, also, um, we do have students at work. So, like, as I mentioned, there's, there's three days that are taught. So maybe if you're doing some other work on those other two days, that's fine. And then you're kind of catching up on your coursework um, on the weekends or the evenings. So it's possible to work. It would be possible. It, it's probably not possible to have a full time job whilst doing the MA. And it's probably not possible to do two MAs at the same time. Yeah. And sadly, we don't we can't offer it as a part-time course currently. So yeah, that is that that makes it a lot harder. Um, and like Em said earlier as well, there are units that overlap in every term. So it's quite, quite an intense schedule. Mm -hmm. um, yes, that was probably what I would uh, recommend as well, taking on Two MAs would be a challenge, I think. <laughs> um, in regards to portfolios, um, someone's asked, do you require a portfolio and what would an ideal portfolio look like for you? This is going to be another one of those questions where we're like, there's no ideal. But yeah, um, we do require a portfolio. Um, we have just been looking through recent applicants, so I can I can confirm that we reply we require a portfolio of work. We also require a video of you talking through uh, your portfolio, which is really helpful to give us context around um, what we're seeing. Um, there's not necessarily one kind of portfolio, so it's more about for me. I mean, I can say my 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 experience, and Anna can say her experience as well. But like, I think it's about seeing the kind of subject areas that you're interested in, your kind of design process, your design thinking, whether you're being critical, you know, what whether the kind of areas link up to the course as well, whether you're looking at kind of eco social justice, whether you're you know interested in kind of climate issues, whether you're you know where do your interests lie, and also um, I think something that we like to see a lot is kind of empathy within portfolio is people caring about other people, people caring about the planet, people being quite active in, in that care as well. So there's no kind of, we want to see six graphic design projects about this. It's more um, the kind of content, the subject area and your approach to those projects that we're interested in, in hearing about. Yeah, I think uh, you summed it up really well. And I think, yeah, because people come from so many different backgrounds, they're I think we, we're just looking for some sort of also creative spark and something you know where, where we feel like um, you show imagination, you show interest and you show kind of a passion and whether that is a really polished design portfolio or um, we have a student who came from a background in grass studies and just had a really amazing portfolio about um, her research into grass studies and um, you know like I said again like you we're not looking for a specific aesthetic or anything i think it's about more like showing your personality and kind of showing us um why you're interested in the course like how your how your perspective and your kind of position fits into uh what we're trying to trying to do mm -hmm. 
That's great, thank you. And we have reached the last question of the evening. Um, is there anywhere to see student work outside of the presentation that we've just seen? Um, yes, so there should be um, the, the, the school website. Um, you should also be able to, we have an Instagram for our course as well, um, which is, let me just handily get, I'll put the, I'll put the handle in the chat afterwards. Um, and we also, um, the online showcase should be live for a year after students graduate. So um, there is also um, work on there. So if you go to the LCC website, they'll have links to the LCC showcase and then you'll be able to see, you know, the projects that some of these projects but in, in more detail. We will conclude there. So thank you very much, Emily and Anna, for giving such an in-depth um, presentation. It's very interesting to hear about it. Um, and thank you everyone for attending. Um, Emily, Anna, if you wanted to just say a last few words, then I will conclude the webinar. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us and hopefully we'll see some of you um, in the future on the course. Um, thanks very much.